The future is here, and it is available to you at a special reduced price. This offer is available for a limited time only, so act now. Welcome to Night Vale. folks, and what a beautiful evening it is here in Night Vale. The sun is setting, the birds are singing, the spiders are spinning their webs industriously. Have you ever stopped to look at how beautiful it is in the evening? I bet you haven't. Why don't you do that now? I think that would be a good idea. Go outside now. Notice. Look how beautiful it is. Do you see it? Are you sure? Yes, it's a beautiful evening indeed, folks. Why not take a stroll around town before it gets too chilly? You know how these desert nights can be. Folks, we have some great news today, coming to you hot off the presses. The votes are in, and Night Vale has a new mayor. We here at Night Vale Community Radio offer our heartfelt congratulations to local billionaire and overall upstanding citizen, Marcus Vanston. It was a hard-fought race indeed, and we feel that a hearty round of handshakes and champagne is due to all the mayoral candidates this year. Or it would be if any of them were still capable of shaking hands or drinking champagne. A hard-fought race indeed. But it's over now. It's all over now. Because as we all know, winning may be the only thing that matters, but that doesn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. Marcus promises to make Night Vale even better, instituting new ideas such as the Toddler Chimney Sweep program and the renovation of the Night Vale subway to help boost our town's economy and get us all involved in the well-being of Night Vale. Just imagine it. Anyone who's out of work or down on his luck or just not bringing in enough revenue will be conscripted into public service works to fill up their mandatory 60-hour work week. Are you imagining it? Good. Keep that image in your mind. Let that be the only thing in your mind. Nothing else is important. Marcus promises to be even richer than he is now, which, of course, means an improvement in the quality of life for all of the rest of us by the trickle-down property of happiness. Remember, when the folks at the top of the social pyramid are happy, everyone is happy. Are you happy yet? Check to see if you are happy yet and let us know. And Marcus Vanston is right up at the top now. Ever since City Council ceded control of the city to the mayor, saying only that, We think you're ready, you lovely people. Ready to stand up and run this city on your own. Ever since then, the mayor has been the ultimate authority in Night Vale. Together, Marcus Vanston and his biggest supporters, Strex Corp. Synernists Incorporated, will make this next mayoral term the greatest we've ever had. Yes, the future is looking bright, folks. Better buy some sunglasses. Available from StrexCorp. Spring is just around the corner, and you know what that means, Night Vale. That's right. It's the annual spring fling at the Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex. Teddy Williams promises the usual dollar bowling, half-off wings, and free tuberculosis screenings. This year, we will be joined by our neighbors from the underground city. Isn't that nice? We'll get to have some neighborly fun with these fascinating and friendly little people. You should make friends with the little people. It would be a good idea. Have you tried making friends? Do you even have any friends? Having friends is important. Very important. Trust me on this one. The Spring Fling will be running all day on March 22nd, coming right up. Don't forget to bring your vaccination papers with you when you come to the Spring Fling, especially if you have not been vaccinated any time in the last three years. Remember, a vaccinated city is a safe city, and your proof of vaccination is the only thing keeping you safe. And now, traffic. All looks pretty clear today, folks. Route 800 is flowing along at a good clip without much congestion at all. 
There is a small wreck just before exit 16, but the police are clearing it up, and it should be all gone before rush hour hits. You won't even realize it was ever there. Don't worry about it. No, really, don't worry. Don't ever worry. Make sure you are not worrying. You should not be worried. In town, things are all just fine. All roads are open and safe for travel, and there don't seem to be too many cars on the roads. Yes, folks, traffic looks just fine. Just like everything else today. And every day. Everything is fine. Everything has always been fine. Everything will always be fine. Just fine. This has been Traffic. What? Oh. Folks, we've just had a press release from the Sheriff's Police. This looks pretty important, so I'm going to read it to you now, despite the small interruption to our program. It says, The fugitive ex-radio host Cecil Gershwin Palmer is still at large. He was last seen fleeing the Greater Nightvale area in the company of the young woman who arrived in town from places unknown several weeks ago. We are assuming that she is his accomplice and should be treated as just as dangerous as Palmer himself. If you see Cecil Palmer or his accomplice, report immediately to the sheriff's police and give them all the information you have on this dastardly duo. We caution you. Palmer and his accomplice are extremely dangerous and are not to be approached under any circumstances. Anyone caught harboring these dangerous criminals will face severe legal repercussions as well as being branded a traitor to the Night Vale community. And you know what that means. Or maybe you don't. You probably don't want to. Again, if you have any information on Cecil Palmer or his accomplice from out of town, inform the sheriff's police immediately. It's for your own good. Wow, folks. That's some serious stuff. Let me just reiterate in case the legalese there went over your head a little bit. If you see Cecil Palmer, or the young woman from out of town, make sure you do not approach them, and call the police as soon as you can do so without putting yourself in danger. Hopefully, with everyone's help, we can put these dangerous criminals behind bars before they can hurt anyone else. Not that anyone is hurt. Of course not. People don't get hurt. Hurt is a thing that is in your mind. Forget about it. Listeners, I've received some insider information that you won't hear on any other radio station, and I have received confirmation that I am at liberty to inform you of what it is. You know Raphael, the intern? Well, he told me that the scientists have promised to pay him five dollars to ring the doorbell of the house that doesn't exist. You know the one that looks like it exists, and is between two other houses that exist, so it would make more sense for it to exist than not. And he said he would do it. I'm so excited. We've been waiting for someone to ring that doorbell for over a year now. I'm proud to be working with such a brave, forward-thinking young man. I'm sure Raphael the intern will go far in life. Raphael will be making his attempt to enter the house that does not exist this coming Tuesday. Station management has even agreed to give him the day off in case he is absorbed into an alternate dimension, or otherwise killed, or effectively corporeally destroyed. In the event that Raphael does not die, we will not cover the event. You should not know anything about the house that does not exist. I'm certain there's nothing in there that you'd want to know about anyway. In the event that Raphael does die, we will not cover the event. Death and or corporeal disincorporation is such a depressing topic, don't you think? I'm sure you don't want to hear about that. It would be too sad for this radio show. We don't want you to be sad. We want you to be happy. We want you to know that everything is fine. Everything will be fine as long as you do exactly what we say and do not ask any questions or set even one toe out of line. Do you know where the lines are? You should know where the lines are. How can you be sure you are not setting even one toe out of line if you do not know where the lines are? 
You should not be present for the attempt on the house that does not exist. You should not think about the house that does not exist. It does not exist. What is there to think about? Nothing. There is nothing there. Forget about the house that does not exist. You know what? Forget I said anything. I'm sorry. I'm sure it's not important. Well, that's enough of that, don't you think? I think so. Enough of whatever that was that you should have forgotten by now. So now, a word from our sponsor. Everything is okay. Everything is great. Don't you think so? But you know what makes things better, no matter the time of day or night. What will improve any situation, no matter how great it already is? Strex. Listeners, can you hear me? I don't know how much time I have before they manage to boot me off the air again, so I have to be quick. I can't tell you how I'm hijacking their broadcast because then they would find me. Just trust that I am safe and whole, and that this is really me speaking to you, here and now. Listeners, do not believe their lies. I have committed no crime except to defy Strexcorp, a crime that, in my opinion, more of us should be guilty of. I have met with Tamika Flynn, who is not missing, not at all. She is only in hiding from Strexcorp, as am I. And she has told me what she learned in the library during that one fateful summer reading program. Listeners, I cannot tell you, for it would take too long. But the things that Strexcorp is and stands for make my blood run cold. I knew in my heart that anyone who would call my Carlos stupid was clearly a self-centered, venomous, downright jerk. And now I know it in my mind as well. Rest assured, listeners, the woman from the Sand Wastes and I are searching diligently for Carlos. The only lead we have is the house that doesn't exist. You know the one. Because that's where Dana and John Peters, you know, the farmer, ended up when they vanished from this reality. I cannot tell you when, in case they are listening, but soon we will be making our attempt to get to Carlos, or at least the plane of reality that Carlos currently occupies. I have to go now, listeners. I can't leave the connection open too long or they'll find me. Stay safe, Night Vale. Stay free. Corp. For all your needs. Huh. Folks, during that last segment, we had a lot of static come in. I sent Raphael the intern up to check on the antenna, but he said there was nothing wrong with it, and definitely no one on the roof. Definitely. He was very clear about that last part. There was absolutely no one on the roof, he said. I checked everywhere. Under the antenna, on top of the antenna, behind the antenna, everywhere. There couldn't possibly be a subversive radio host hiding up there, hijacking the broadcast. I was very thorough. No one else needs to check. Nuh-uh. Definitely not. Do we even have a roof? I'm pretty sure we don't. Oh well. Maybe it was just some interference from Desert Bluffs. They have a lovely community radio program, too, you know. I've always thought we should be better neighbors to Desert Bluffs. They are our sister city, after all. At any rate, we've gotten word from the sheriff's police that they are hot on the trail of fugitive ex-radio host Cecil Palmer. They say new evidence has come to light about his whereabouts, and they are closing in even as we speak. Good. I hope they catch him. I hope that when they catch him, they... Well, what I want doesn't matter. We can say for certain that things will happen to him when he is caught. It is likely that they will not be pleasant. For him. Not pleasant at all. Highly unpleasant. I sure do hope they catch him before anyone else gets hurt. Poor Lauren, our station manager, is still in the hospital. That maniac cracked her head against the booth window when she came in to check on him after the last show. I ask you, who would do that? What kind of a person would you have to be to viciously attack someone who was only trying to help you? 
I don't know, folks, but I fear for the safety of our little town, so long as Cecil Palmer and his accomplice are still at large. But folks, let us not dwell on the bad things. Let us not fret ourselves with the unknown and the troubling. Let us not fetter our minds with the chains of worry and fear. Let us, instead, go quietly and pleasantly to the weather. They gave me a test to make me the best that I could be. They knew all along that there was something wrong with me. We picked out a spot and made a hole. While you're in glass and stainless steel. Now I can imagine how I feel. Got a new heart. blood on the bed but here in my head I'm feeling fine it's easy to sleep when I'm not buzzing all the time so funny the way I was before once I was blind but now I see once I was him but now he's me Well, here it is, folks. The end of another broadcast and another day in Night Vale. I have to say, I'm going to miss you all. I know, I know. It's a little silly of me, but I'm really going to miss this. Sitting here in this cozy booth, just talking to all of you out there. I feel so loved, so connected with all of you. I hope you feel the same. I hope this little community radio station is bringing us all closer together. I know I feel closer to all of you than when we started. Do you feel closer? Pay attention to how you feel. You should feel closer. If you don't, maybe you should get that looked at. I think that's a symptom of tuberculosis. Isn't it just a lovely night? Smell that fresh, clean air. Look at those beautiful stars up there. Doesn't it feel great, looking up at that star-spattered sky? Isn't it beautiful? I don't know how anyone could feel anything but love and joy looking up at that sky, that big, full, sparkling sky. So full. So full of void. Beautiful, lovely void. Do you think stars get lonely? No. They don't. Because they are not sentient. They do not have consciousness. They are happy without thoughts or feelings. Wouldn't you like to be a star? I bet you would. I bet it would be nice. But I'm rambling. I'm sorry, folks. I just don't want to go. I've had so much fun here today with all of you. But I guess I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. That's not too long, right? Right. We'll just have to live life to the fullest without each other. Until then. And so, until then, this is Carolyn Johnson, your source for all things Night Vale, signing off. Good night, lovely Night Vale. Good night. Cecil, 
I don't know why you're not answering your phone. I hope nothing's happened to you, but I, I can't worry about that now. I mean, I do, of course, I'm worried about you, but... Forget it. Just please answer the phone. I still don't know where I am, but there's a landmark. Some kind of blinking light or something, but it's very far away and I don't know what it really is. I'm going to investigate it. There might be a way back from here and I have to keep looking. I hope you'll keep looking too. I hope you can keep looking. I love you, Cecil. I'll try to get home soon. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Commonplace Books. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner, and produced by Joseph Fink. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. Original music by Disparition and Aperture Science Psychoacoustic Laboratories. Most of it can be found online at disparition.info or disparition.bandcamp.com. Today's weather was Artificial Heart by Jonathan Colton. More information can be found at jonathancolton.com. Portal and all related characters, devices, and scenarios belong to Valve. Today's proverb. Here's a fun experiment. Hold your breath as long as you can. Hold your breath until you can no longer breathe. Keep holding it. Hold it forever. <laughs>